Welcome to the podcast, everybody. First order of business, we were just watching a video about the Suvaldi, Texas shooting. Obviously very sad. The part that, because I don't, I'm not an expert in guns, what is fascinating is watching uh, the opposite teams just say things that are funny. So I clicked a couple of Fox News uh, things yesterday, Fox News videos on YouTube. And one of them was the five, one of them was Tucker Carlson. Really interesting. A talking point that I think Ben Shapiro invented in his conversation with Piers Morgan many years ago is standing on the graves. I don't know if you've heard that mm-hmm. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I that means it. you're not allowed to talk right now. <laughs> it's fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Standing on the graves to click a, to kick a political football. You smash those two together. That's apparently a thing that they've decided is yeah, yeah. a really good way to discuss the topic. It's... My, my opinions, just before I talk about what I think is more interesting, is that uh, I don't know the gun laws that were there. I don't know what gun laws would have prevented this from happening. I'm under the impression that there's like 600 million some guns in America. I'm under the impression that many of the shootings that America faces are with pistols and that the amount that are done with semi-automatic and AR-15s is smaller, but that the amount of uh, large-scale shootings, you know, like five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten or more people is with those automatic guns. Uh, and in the moments where everybody's attention gets pulled to it, uh, that my that I don't know what the answer is. It's just interesting to watch other people fight vehemently for yeah. whatever their side is. Yeah, I, th- I think the th- thing that I'm always surprised by is how the gun can, the the people that don't, that like freedom of guns, NRA, that kind of stuff will position the other side as if the other side is demanding that every gun be melted down and thrown into the ocean, which I've never heard anyone advocate for. And it's interesting to me that there's a, there's such a fear of the slippery slope yeah. give an inch and they'll take a mile that, that a lot of people don't want any reform at all, which I find really surprising instead of just saying, this is crazy. We're the only country that deals with this to this magnitude. That's a quote unquote developed nation. Surely we can do better. And then going to like, can we do small things that no one minds that we all agree would be helpful, like doing more background checks or better background checks or certain kinds of guns only, or some sort of reform that doesn't affect 99.9% of gun owners, Mm -hmm. but does affect 50% of school shootings, let's say. And it wouldn't stop them all, but you go, okay, we now have half as many school shootings and no one has really been affected that wanted to have a gun for self-defense or just to shoot at a target because they think it's fun. And it becomes instead this weird, if we let them do any reform at all, then we're going to be Australia in no time type defense of... Whatever the current law is, is the best possible setup. Mm -hmm. I think there's another thing that I see, which is because I've I've tried to, I know very little about guns. And I think most people talking about this topic know very little about guns. Just to clarify my position, I think that it's reasonable to say that that you have a right to own firearms of some kind Mm -hmm. for self-defense in case the government becomes tyrannical, whatever your thought process is. And I think the idea of like, oh, we pistols alone aren't going to stop the military the only way you stop the military is if you have the entire country, 300 million people strong, trying to, because they have tanks and drones. And <laughs> well, like, I, I actually thought about this against a tyrannical government. It's not ideal, but like clearly we were unable to uh, make long term change in Afghanistan. Like I do think there's really is the Second Amendment I see as being incredibly valuable, not just for the purposes of self-defense, which doesn't mean that much to me because uh, I don't think that's why it's there. It seems to be against government encroachment mm-hmm. and turning the military forces who have a monopoly of violence on the populace Mm -hmm. and so i was just thinking about this i was like look after afghanistan not i don't think and i don't think it's going to happen in 2023 but in 2060 should there be a weird u.s government thing that wanted to turn inwards uh there is a lot of firepower out in the hills of Mm -hmm. of the u.s and it i i think that that is a necessary counterbalance of power given how much is vested in the u.s military so i do see that i, I see the value of the second amendment and then yeah, well, I, where I, I, with you is, I, I just not, don't know where to draw the line it's clearly not at nuclear warheads well sorry like, here's here's what i am you're saying what i am saying which is i don't think that we should 
I, one, I don't think you would. I think if you did try an Australia law, you would just make it so the only people that had guns were people that were willing to have them illegally. I don't think you'd get every gun in the U.S. But two, I'm not proposing we do that. Mm -hmm. I just think it's weird that all sides can't come together to go, is there a way we can just do a little bit better? I agree. It feels religious. Yes. So when I turned on when I turned on Fox News, I was struck by the religious feeling, which I see mirrored on the other side of the aisle with some of the woke stuff. Mm -hmm. Like there's this unquestionable yeah, you know creation myth ideology uh, and deep, deep fear that, like you said, giving an inch would mean uh, taking my like the slippery slope. Fear is uh, baked in. And then I also wonder if there, if the people on the news stations are being sincere because some of what I watched on Fox News seemed like these talking points were so ridiculous and so re repeated, you know, standing on the graves of, of like, Jesus Christ, we've heard it. Let's just pretend we're referring to another gun violence incident <laughs> that, that was yeah. not so recent. Like, why can't, why can't you sincerely address some of the concerns and show any openness to a good point that might that you might not already have considered. Yeah, no, and it, it it's also the other thing I notice in the dialogue because I I do look at it and just go, why is this breaking down so much? That's kind mm -hmm. of where my where I go. It's like how can we how are we not coming to collaborative solutions here? Mm -hmm. Is the idea of some people, and I've seen this even on Instagram, some people point to you need massive gun control, and then the people who like having guns say this is a mental health crisis. And I don't understand why these are binary. And I saw someone I know who's an influencer made this big uh, this, this big speech about how this is about turning inward and the mm -hmm. rot of the mental health situation, blah, blah, blah. And so we shouldn't do any gun control. We should focus on that. And it was so to the exclusion of yeah, yeah, yeah. gun laws that I found it odd. Instead of just saying, hey, there's a crisis, there's a mental health crisis, it was... And we need to stop talking about gun control mm -hmm. and focus on because that takes away from what we should. Yeah, which yes, is, and which, which I not, yeah. which I was like, well, why wouldn't you try to do both of these things? Mm -hmm. Why wouldn't you? I, I saw what you're talking about. I thought, focus I on thought mental it was health. Odd. I thought it was odd. <laughs> and ask, is there a way we could possibly mean that mental laws? health didn't explode and hurt so? Like when somebody explodes from a mental health perspective, that their blast radius isn't 25 people. Yeah, like exactly. Yeah, and it was very, and it was. <clears throat> The thing I found so interesting and odd was how it was specifically at the exclusion of talking about gun yeah, control. Yeah. So we should stop talking about gun control and focus on mental health. Yeah. And I don't know why you wouldn't do both. Yes. I, if I were to speak to that person, I don't want to argue with you about it because I agree. Yeah, yeah. If I were to talk to them, I would definitely. The other thing I wanted to just flag as we're talking about this is I, I do think at a high level that one of the huge issues with this is just how – uh, the conversation just gets yanked around by whatever happened this week. You know what I mean? So, like, it, it'll be, it was Ukraine, well, it was COVID, then it was Ukraine, then it was a trans athlete, now it's guns, next yeah. week it'll be something else. And it's like, this is not how you solve problems in life, by, yeah. like, running to well, whatever calls your attention that week. No, I agree. And I, we talked about this before. Can we just get a list of the top causes of suffering in the world and in the United States of America and start moving down? And when there is gun violence, not immediately stop... Uh, what we've decided are the high priority. But things. also if it is gun <laughs> violence, don't just stop because yeah, yeah, yeah. there's a week without a shooting. Exactly. No, I agree. It's, exactly. it's, and I think for each tragedy that occurs, whether it's Ukraine or whether it's a hurricane or whether it's a school shooting, there are people that stick to that thing. Mm -hmm. But I think the vast majority of people stick to nothing, mm -hmm. which means that they're actually contributing to nothing. They're doing the BLM social yeah, post. Yeah. They're doing the Ukraine social post. They're doing the gun control social post, but they don't stick to anything. They just let the news tell them what's happening without picking a cause they actually believe in. Mm -hmm. And so they do nothing to actually solve any of the world's problems. Yeah. This reminds me, I don't want to hop off this too quick, but maybe we'll come back to it, is that I watched a video about how Disney and Universal have realized, and I think everyone in LA already knows this, that people... Uh, come to your business, not necessarily for the product you sell, but for the picture they can take there. Mm -hmm. So they've started building their theme parks accordingly. We can come back to that. Um, well, no, I mean, so I you think just, you just reminded me of the performative. Yeah, well, I, I guess what I would say for people who are listening, because it's, it's, you're like, okay, well, what do I do to not be that? Is you pick your thing and you just go, we're going to do this thing. And we talked about, you know, we raise money for charity water and whatever's happening in the news, we just keep raising money to charity water. And it's not because every issue isn't important. It's just because that's, our 
cause that we stay focused on. And, and, and I think everybody can yeah. pick their thing and stick to it and keep volunteering for it or fundraising for it or bringing awareness to it no matter what's happening in the news. I think that's how you can help people actually. Because I think if you yeah. if you are screaming about gun control, but you're not calling your senator, you're not getting write-ups done, you're not doing something to get new elected officials, and then in two weeks you stop doing whatever you are doing by screaming about gun control, you're effectively not doing anything. You're just having a you're just doing it for the attention or the emotional relief it gives you, yeah, yeah. but not to help the kids that might be victims of future school shootings. Yeah, well, to steel man, the influencer that you had mentioned earlier, I do think that he's talking to that point, which is, I think he's speaking specifically to the activist of the week, the, you know, the mm -hmm. flavor of the day activist. And to them, he says, look inward. And I think that's the right advice yes, for that he's particular also, person. He's also pro-guns, mm -hmm. which is why I think the and stop talking about guns, made it into the message. Yes. And I think the message would have been cleaner to just go, we have a mental health thing, and we need to take care of it and, all, and every week, no matter if there's yeah, a shooting yeah. or not, no matter if there's a basketball game going on, no matter, like, hit, you know, well, your And thing also, your incessant social media posting contributes to this mental health thing, is or is a symptom of yes. this mental health thing. Yeah, yeah. Like, you can do your own little part by working on your mental health, which is not supported by uh, the string of Instagram stories that are each this big that you yeah, have yeah. that you have posted today, you yeah. know. Um, so, but I I saw the same thing. I was like, yo, there's a uh, there there's a lot of reactivity in this communication. Yeah, you know, like, and that doesn't. By the way, it doesn't mean it's not a horrible tragedy. It just means. Oh no, I, I was should, talking about our friend. You should yeah. pick what of the many horrible tragedies that occur in the world, you want to make an actual change to stop and then stick to it even when it's not what CNN and Fox News are talking about. And switch it if uh, new data comes in that is yes, changes, yeah. your, changes your hypothesis or thesis yeah. statement. about it. The one thing I thought was interesting too about the news is did you see the Yerger stuff? We, the Yerger's, yeah, I, I like in the background read a headline. I don't yeah. know anything about it. Well, I just thought that was interesting. So like the number one, the number one thing on social media news wise isn't even this school shooting. It's a defamation case. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, like yeah. that's the thing that's getting all the eyeballs and quietly in the background, someone hacked a uh, Chinese government database and got a bunch of information that said, basically those internment camps are worse than we thought. And that there is a whole bunch of horrible shit happening in China. Mm -hmm. And China's just says, no, it's not true. -uh. And <laughs> no one will like, they're beyond reproach. Yeah. The, I forget who it is. I think it's the UN is sending someone to check out the camps. And China said, okay, but you can't have free reign. You're going to do our yeah, yeah. program. We're going to guide you through, like your tourists at an attraction. And everybody knows that this is going to mean no new information gets yeah, gathered yeah. because it's going to be incredibly curated, this experience. Mm -hmm. And no one is saying that's not okay. You can't do that, China, blah, blah, blah. People are saying it. There's just no teeth to it. Which, which, sorry, I meant no government. Yeah, yeah. No government is stepping in and saying this is unacceptable. You have to give us free access or, or else, else yeah, yeah. we're going to do sanctions trade, or trade. we're going to do war yeah. or we're going to... Yeah, that's there quietly beyond reproach as they do potentially a, a concentration camp-esque thing to a million people I inside mean, their country. And, and to be uh, back in whatever, 2003, when... George Bush got in his mind that we were going into Iraq and the UN said there are no weapons of mass destruction and everyone else in the world was like, yeah, we're part of the UN and we agree with that report and we went in totally beyond reproach and yeah, yeah. fucking uh, leveled a nation and, you know, then helped them rebuild it. Uh, feels feels similar and that's what happens when you're the big dog with the big stick. It's just like... Sure. I just thought it was interesting. It's like, okay, there's, a there's an actual tragedy, which is the school shooting mm -hmm. and people will stop talking about it in two weeks. There's a defamation case, which is getting all the news coverage, which is Johnny Depp and Amber Heard, mm -hmm. and then quietly China may be committing a Holocaust. And, uh, you know, cardiovascular disease remains at the top of the list of yeah, like yeah. things that kill Americans. And we all, all have, whatever, Pepsi and Coke for, yeah. for our drinks today. That, dude, that is so cultural, so culturally ingrained. Like the obesity, I, I just was in Europe for a week mm -hmm. and ate like shit in my mind, because I was eating croissants mm -hmm. and desserts and stuff like that and lost weight mm. because their portions are so small wow. that you just can't eat nearly as much as you do in the US. It is so funny. We have a very, I don't want to say self-inflicted, but like as a country self-inflicted obesity mm -hmm. epidemic in the sense that we have lost 
any sense of what amount of food would sustain us. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. And I thought, I just thought that was so interesting because I went and every day was a cheat day and I came back skinnier than when I left. And it's just because the portions that they give you. Do you think you might've lost muscle? Do you think you might've? Who knows? Maybe. <laughs> but I think yeah, it's a lot of walking and a lot of eating small meals. Mm -hmm. And in the U.S., it's a lot of sedentary and a lot of giant portions. Mm -hmm. And if you don't get your giant portion, you're furious. Mm -hmm. And I thought, I just thought I was surprised by that. I don't really have a takeaway, but I just went, oh, wow. Yeah, we just normalize overeating. Yeah. One of the, well, we can hop over to those influencers. I just wrote the one Uvalde thing that I wrote. I listened to Governor Abbott in Texas talk about it. And just one of the lines that he said, I was, I was struck by. He said, you know, evil has swept across Uvalde. And... I, there is, to our influencer friend's point, this othering, this like, and it was uh, wildly cold-hearted, obviously, to go gun down a bunch of kids. But there is this, when you, when you say something is evil, you cannot understand it or relate to it. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? You cannot reverse engineer. It's just evil. It's, it's irredeemable. It's, it's all of those things. And... I would, I'm sure this was a distraught 18 year old kid with a story and a family life that would begin to make more sense of, of what happened, though it doesn't excuse it in any way. And I don't know, the approach of just calling it evil or bad apples and like building walls against the bad apples is certainly part of what needs to happen. And I think, you know, mental health, gun control, et cetera, but also a, it's just not, you just can't build a wall against this shit. Like, this is going to happen as long as it seems like something that is impossible, impossibly evil. It's just created and the forces of good need to fight it. I don't know. It doesn't, it lacks a, um, an attempt to understand is, is what I noticed in that, just, just in that word choice. Yeah, I don't know enough about the specifics of this person. So I don't know if this is a born psychopath who's been skinning squirrels forever or if they were yeah. normal person yeah. who suffered head trauma or a lifetime of abuse. So I, I, I don't know the specifics. So I couldn't possibly guess why this person did this. Yeah. So let's, I'll talk to the influencer. So I watched this video, which was, which was cool. I think it was from Wendover Productions who makes really good videos it was on Disney theme parks and the Harry Potter and how that mm -hmm. sort of changed the game. Long story short, JK Rowling played a massive role, wrote this contract that was unheard of. And Disney was like, too rich for my blood, can't take this. So she went to Universal and they're like, fuck, okay, she's got total creative control. She gets to decide. Big thing that she did was like, none of this Coke, Pepsi crap. Like it's gonna be whatever, butter, beer. And yeah, like yeah. all, you know, it's it's Harry Potter to the gills mm -hmm. in Harry Potter world. And also interesting, there's not much to do in Harry Potter. There's not much to do. There's one ride. Bro, but- and, and that was it. There's like a ride that is a cool ride, but it's an experience. And there's a lot of photos to be taken yes. and a lot of like immersion. No, you go to, there. you go to the candy store and all the candies are named <laughs> after the candies from the movie. But obviously when you have the frog chocolate, it doesn't actually hop around. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah. There's nothing remarkable about it compared yeah. to a Hershey bar. Mm -hmm. And you go get your butter beer, which is beer, <laughs> just a drink. Well, yeah, I actually yeah. think it's not alcohol, oh, but like, it. it's not, it's, it's funny because it's exactly what I, don't like doing mm -hmm. because what I would want is something that just had a bunch of awesome rides. It's did just, you not like it? Harry Potter world. Yeah. Cause you read the books and you're, you're a Harry Potter. Guy. No, I well, did I not like it. It's cool when you first see it. Cause you just go, wow, they really did recreate is this, this Florida or Disneyland, by the way. It's probably one in each. Yeah. I'm I went to the one in California. Okay. Th this was about the one in Florida, but go ahead. Oh, which might be better. Yeah. It actually might be better. Yeah. The one in California. Yeah. You just walk around. You're like, okay, cool. This is a restaurant and some buildings and mm -hmm. a r one ride like yeah. it's i don't know why it's so hyped up but it's incredible for photos yeah well because you look like you're in harry potter it had an incredibly positive effect on universal's parks like wildly so to the degree that uh according to him it influenced disney for the star wars acquisition and when they mm. built their star wars they're like we gotta like build it like this it mm. can't just be it's got to be themed to the gills it's got to be an experience and it's got to be uh all of these sorts of things but what was interesting is just the idea that this new generation values experiences which was like oh that's good they're not as materialistic yeah, no, they love no, experiences no, no. it's like if you took away their phones yeah and they couldn't take a picture i think you'd watch park attendants 
fall off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> like it's not. I also think you watch European value. vacations fall off a cliff. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure. Yeah. You watch, bro. It's it's insane. It's like it's not that they value the experience. It's that they value showing. Uh, personal branding is what they value. Sure. The ability to personally brand themselves as a traveler or this or that or an experiencer. Um, and that is almost more sad to me than materialism. Like I almost would prefer someone that, well, they're both sad. You know what I mean? Whether you're like, I have they're a Lamborghini. Same. They're the same sad. They're the same thing. Well, actually, you know what? A guy that has a Lamborghini is like, I have a fucking Lamborghini. And he drives it and he doesn't care. He just like, vroom, vroom. No, like, I, I don't know about that. If if he here's the thing if he has a Lamborghini so that the guy next to him at the stoplight can see it it's the same exact yes. shit it, yes. it's the same. someone has the car because they like that it goes fast yeah but a lot of people have the car because they like what it says about them to the few people in the radius of the car yes which I think and is the social same. media just explodes that to uh, yeah. the whole world now yes but I guess it's like look if you I don't know when I buy a video game <laughs> that is materialism. But I'm sure <laughs> that it is not for what it says. Does that about count me. as materialism? If you buy, so I actually don't I guess know. weirdly enough, I am paying for an experience. Yeah, that's I, interesting. I actually don't think if you buy, like it's not materialism isn't what you spend money on. If You're you buy, right. if you spend five hundred dollars on Dungeons and Dragons books, and then you yeah, and your friends yeah. play without putting it on social media, without telling anyone about it for the fun of it, that would not count, I believe, as materialism. I think materialism is specifically when you buy stuff for the broadcasting to other people you know what's interesting is that we didn't have that word prior to it because like how would you broadcast to your community well you would get an item and then you would just walk around with a shirt or a rolex or whatever so yeah. we called it materialism but it wasn't about you're right it wasn't about buying a thing it if was you the, buy yeah. a rolex it's considered materialism but if you spent money on a pool it actually wasn't called materialism mm -hmm. even though it might cost the same amount or more it was a, it, people assumed it was so you could swim. Or Unless it was to swim. keep up with the Joneses who had a pool and you got the bigger pool so you could invite them over Correct. and show but, them. <laughs> Correct. But I think if you just had a pool yeah, and yeah. you didn't talk about it and brag about it and you put shrubs around it so your neighbors couldn't see and it. And you swam in it, you yeah. invited your kids' friends over to swim. That, I, that wasn't considered materialism when I was growing up. Materialism was cars, watches, shirts, bags, yeah, yeah. stuff that was meant to tell other people about your wealth. Interesting. So yeah, but that was uh, just uh, sort of they they have figured out how to tap into that. And the the other thing is just man, they are so good at separating you from your money. Well, the amount of brilliant minds that go into those parks, we don't need to talk wait, about. Can we, it. can we circle back to that? Sure. There is one thing I, I was thinking, which is I think that the the interesting thing is that people can become so obsessed with the photo that they detach from their current experience. So you have someone that goes to Disney and like. It's not fun, and they're not having fun. If you had a video camera on them, they're not smiling, they're not laughing, they look yeah, yeah, stressed yeah. or bored or whatever. And then they do the photo, and then they go, it was all worth it yeah. in their mind. Like, this was net a positive day because I have the photo and I can show other people because they genuinely have lost track of the self-awareness of you were actually miserable this whole day. Like, you frowned and bitched and looked at your feet or whatever, and... You weren't happy to be here. Mm -hmm. But then when you ask them at the end of the day, like, how was your day? It's like, oh my God, it was amazing. Did you go on a bunch of sick rides that you enjoyed? No, you mm -hmm. hated everything about it, but got the photo. And now your brain is telling you that was all worth it because yeah. your brain thinks you need the photo for whatever reason for your tribe to accept you. Which is the definition of addiction. You know what I mean? It's like you could not get a clearer example of addiction, which is this thing that doesn't improve my life that I don't enjoy, that I find myself endlessly compelled to return to <laughs> because of a single moment of, you know, a hole being filled or something like that. Um, yeah, I also think it comes from and a rewriting the of same history. desires yeah. as everything else, which is like that desire to fit in and be respected or loved or admired by, by your tribe. The only other thing that I have less is... Amber Heard pledging donating. I don't know if you saw this. No. Well, you told me about it briefly. You didn't see this. It's fucking amazing. Um, I, I, I know uh, nothing about this trial except for what you tell me. Bro, not my best video, but I, I mentioned this in the upcoming video that I hope we don't release because I'm not that proud of it, but my editor says it's good enough. <laughs> <laughs> um, and that'll be coming out this Monday. Yeah, not my favorite video that I've ever done. I get to watch it tomorrow. So Amber Heard has this whole Johnny Depp thing, uh, divorce settlement. He, uh, she's awarded $7 million in the settlement. 
which she immediately says, I pledge. It to- seems low. Yeah, I don't know. Seven. I mean, it's a lot for her. It's a lot for her. It's. It, I don't know how much he has, but um, I, I agree. Thought, I would have thought Johnny Depp had like $100 million. I don't know. But in any event, she gets seven. Okay. Interesting. Which she do- donates to, she says, pledges immediately to the children's hospital. and All, um, all so seven? No, 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 I'm not done. She pledges it immediately. Johnny Wait. sends the first payment to the, she says, three and a half to the ACLU, all of it. Three, th- three and a half to the children's hospital. She pledges it all immediately okay. and publicly. Johnny says, thanks. Sends the first check to the, like, children's hospital. Yeah. She says, uh-uh-uh, if you're going to do this, you're not going to get the tax break from it, which is pretty fucking vindictive, if you ask me. Like, wait a second. What is your goal? Is Your, your goal is literally to hurt me? Because let's, let's look where this money goes. If in this settlement, I send $7 million to these charities, which you've said, and so you still get zero, they get all the money, and the U.S. government is short $7 million, state of California. She says, no, if you want to get the tax break... You have to send them fourteen million, meaning it has to hurt you just as much, which is like okay. fucking vindictive. <laughs> you know what I mean? Um, so he, de- or you can send it to me, and also you have to send it in one lump sum to them. <laughs> she says, which is just like don't send it to them. Yep. Basically, she yeah, makes yeah. it worse to send it to the charities. So he pays her over the course of like two years or something like that. She goes on television after having received all of it and states. And, you know, talks about it. And if there's a Swedish television show, he says, look, people were like saying that you were a gold digger, but you did something pretty incredible. Why don't you tell the audience? And I heard line is like seven million dollars was donated to uh, the AC- half to the ACLU, half to the Children's Hospital of Los Angeles or something like that. You know, and, you know, I'm, I'm just a mouthpiece for all this stuff. Seven million was donated. And there's other uh, that's like the video evidence, but there's other People magazines or whatever where she, where it says was donated. Okay, turns out, spoiler alert, <laughs> that she donated. Elon Musk sent five hundred thousand, I think, to each, which didn't count towards her pledge, mm-hmm. and she donated, I think, like a couple hundred thousand, maybe a million, but not seven. And, uh, but continued to say donated, donated, mm-hmm. donated. So on the stand, her credibility is super in question here. She knows this is coming. So the lawyer hits her and says, you said that shows her the clip, but that wasn't true, Miss Heard. In fact, you'd had the money for 18 months and you did not, in fact, donate it. She goes, uh, yes, I did. I pledged it all. She goes, no, you didn't donate it. Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. I pledged it all. Miss Heard, my questions, please. I, yes, I did. I, I pledged it all. What is wrong with you, Miss Heard? Yeah. I... I and she goes, I use pledge and donate synonymously, <laughs> which is just like, holy shit. And I, what I realized about court cases in watching this is that the attorneys have a list of questions that they're going through and didn't anticipate this. But oh my God, she should have nailed her much harder there, which is like, to, to clarify, Ms. Heard, when you donate money, in whose bank account does, does that stay? Yeah, yeah. When you pledge money in whose bank account, she also says, I intended to, but then I was sued, which is like, you just gave away the golden goose, which is, this is your slush fund of if you need it. That's what pledge means to you. Yeah. yeah. If I should need money, I don't give it away, yeah. <laughs> which is literally, fuck it. My whole bank account is pledged to uh, my next door neighbor in case I need it, in which case I won't give it to them, but I fully intend to, which is just, it, it was bonkers nonsense, the clearest moment of her um lying i thought in the entire court case yeah like it's just so transparent and they, but didn't, they don't nail her on it it's not a good look but they didn't smash home the absurdity yeah of considering something donated but saving it for a lawsuit well you do you are limited in what you can pontificate as the lawyer you, you have to do everything in the form of a question, of question. Yeah. yes yes but they could have gone you know the money that you donated was paid. In whose account? Uh, in whose bank account does that rest now? Sure, Ms. sure. Heard. You know what I mean. And in whose account does yours rest? Are you able to get the money back for this lawsuit that you gave to the ACLU? Should you need it? You know what I mean. Like this is that's the difference between donated and pledged. Yeah. Is you take on the risk of not having the fucking money. <laughs> yeah, I think I think the interesting thing is that she still might win. 
even with even with all this well to be yes yes so that was the most that was a really bad look i actually say in the video she did as good as she could in that moment of just being unflustered and acting like someone who truly used those words synonymously mm -hmm. uh and not over explaining but i think she probably she may win she like which is interesting because the whole world thinks that she looks terribly during this but it's very hard in, for Johnny to win, he has to definitively prove that he never did something, Not which is very what? hard. I think she, I think, I don't know that he has to prove that she, he doesn't have to prove the negative. He has to prove the absence of a positive, I think, on, on his part, or that she was lying or, or disrupted. I don't think so. I think he has to enough. prove the negative. Because you can't prove a negative. I know. That's why I'm saying he's kind of, unless he can. Well, no, that's what I'm saying is that you, like that person has to establish some credible claim of abuse but they she only needs one yeah and in watching it my takeaway is amber heard is definitely a liar amber heard definitely hit johnny depp and over the course of 18 months i would almost be surprised if johnny depp didn't hit amber heard given the volatility and violence involved in their relationship i don't know that he did he also had a bad moment in cross-examination yesterday where for the first time, oh God, what did they say? He said that a text sent from his phone wasn't sent by him. So like the lawyer goes and says, and it is it true that you say that women who you have slept with, are you own them. I would never, I would never. Okay, can we pull this up, this text message on this date from your phone? Not me. Didn't send that. Somebody else might have sent it from my phone. Hmm. Which is just like, bro, it's got the dot, dot, dot periods, the Johnny Depp double exclamation points, the flowery language. Yeah, it's, like, yeah. just, like, it's also that, uh, <laughs> the, my bro, Twitter somebody got, got your phone and fucking said that Molly's whatever, you know, vagina was theirs. Like it just, somebody got your phone, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like you got to just take your lumps of like, yo, I text rude things. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and, uh, yeah, and because he's he's texted a lot of fucking rude things, yeah. you know. Like, and the other one is he, he's writing about he's going to slice. He calls him mollusk, but I think it's just probably because of uh, autocorrect. He's going to like slice his dick off, or like because Amber's sucking his dick that that something is happening or whatever. Um, oh, he doesn't Elon? deny that. Yeah, he doesn't deny that one. Said so I'm going to cut Elon's dick off. It's it's just like slice. <laughs> it's just yo. It's. It's graphic, and the idea that uh, one is beyond you and one isn't is like, I don't buy it. Yeah. And now you, to me, if I'm a juror, it's like, I think I just watched you either conveniently forget or lie. Yeah, yeah. And uh, you were doing all right, but I'm not certain that you didn't hit her once or ever. And all that it takes to be an abuser is a single fucking, in the terms of defamation, I mean. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I don't know if he's going to win or lose. Obviously, the public, it is disturbing to me how one-sided. I actually feel freaked out by it. Yeah. If you look at the YouTube comments, it's freaky, and it scares me because I don't see a lot of people considering as like, look, Amber could be a liar. She could have made up several. She could have exaggerated the abuse, and Johnny also might have punched her in the face on one or two occasions. Like, My biggest thing is I'm, I'm really surprised at how much coverage this is getting. Yeah. Truly shocked. If you told me how much coverage is this defamation case going to get, I would have said probably as much as the case in England got or probably as much coverage as it got when she initially made the... Cameras in the courtroom. I know. Yeah. But it's, but I just... I was wrong, obviously. But I would I didn't realize that people would care so much about a defamation case with Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I find it somewhat interesting, but it's, uh, it's the trial of the decade, I think. I think for, you know... Five years on either side of it, it'll be the biggest event. Hopefully, God, hopefully there's not, <laughs> it's not something else. And also, some of the uh, some of the things on stand have been truly remarkable. Maybe they happen in every case, but her on stand with the the histrionics of her first testimony, which felt very very fake. Um, I don't know if you saw the psychologist that was super cantankerous and at one point just goes. Mm. Fucking just like weird shit to watch. Um, so yeah, that's what I saw. Anything else? That video is coming out Monday. It's not very good. Don't watch it. Sorry, guys. Watch it. I'll tell you the truth, yo. I got I got you covered. Charisma University is great. This video is not. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so don't fucking. I'm um, sad to watch it. Well, I, what were the other things I wrote down? Oh yeah, I thought this was mildly interesting. The Satanic Temple, the Satanic Church. 
says they're going to open religious abortion centers in states that ban abortion. I don't think that's going to work, but I think it'll get the case back to the Supreme Court. So, so depending on... Because it's a religious ceremony or something? Yeah, they're, they're basically saying they freedom have... Freedom of religion? Freedom of religion to do abortions. Are they treated? Are they not taxed? Are they, do they have, they're not taxed. They have the same protections? I think so, yeah. Interesting. Yep. They're, and they're not... The Satanic Church is actually just basically a church of atheists. They don't yeah. actually worship no, no, they call Satan it, or yeah. Judeo-Christian. Not anything. a really good branding decision. It was like for the lulls and for the owns, but unfortunately, because it sounds like what they often do is try to prove the absurdity of the special... What they per- exist to do, it seems, is uh, use the protections yes. that they think the church gets unfairly in ways that they deem more ethical. So Mm -hmm. to try to get abortion to be legalized, which they believe in, or to try to create uh, tax laws that they think are more fair or whatever it is. Bad bad name, honestly. Well, they're, yeah, they're kind of an anti, they're kind of an anti-religion organization that's just trying to limit government protections of religion. Which is is a sense that I get from Totally love that idea it's great i think it's uh archaic antiquated all of these special exceptions that are made for religions are ridiculous i think we should tax them definitely yeah (laughs) well you can't because they will just use all of their money to harass and control some of that scientology money back yeah um, yeah. in any event so i thought that was interesting so this abortion thing is going to continue to go back and forth into the supreme court over and over uh And then this last one, I actually just thought, I just was wondering if you think this is true or not. I was reading an article Tim Ferriss sent out where he was interviewing someone whose advice was, don't ever work for someone you wouldn't want to become. And I thought that was an interesting quote, not a quote I'd heard before. I was curious if you think that's good advice. Ever? (laughs) Like... That's this person's advice, yeah. I mean, come on. It's just a tweet, probably. But yeah, that's... I. I No, it wasn't a tweet. It's in a... It's in a... This person writes out a life advice article that they update every five years. Okay, I disagree. Um, when I first was fresh out of college and I knew shit about shit, I was not going, I needed money because mm-hmm. I had student loans. And I didn't, he's a nice guy. I just, I don't want to be him. Uh, it was the right thing for me to spend a year and a half at a job to realize what I didn't like about the working world, the suits and the, you know, performance the reports that didn't get acted upon and mm-hmm. like that a- aspect of consulting i don't go back and go that was a mistake at all did you know going into it that you didn't want to be a consultant no so i think this guy would say it wasn't wrong to take the job but once you realized that you didn't want to be like oh no no but if i it, bro if you showed me any of those associates for i'd be like do you want to be this guy no that was obvious yeah that was totally obvious at every stage i was like is this is this your dream i think no no definitely not um, I don't know. I just, I think that that's too totalizing. Sure. I think it's generally, you know, advice that, that would be useful is work for people. Let's just flip it. Try to work for people who you want to be more like or who you want to become. Great. <laughs> I'm, I'm in. But I guess it's crunchier when you say it. it is, well, that's kind of what I thought. I read it. I go, I don't know if this is true, but it sounds really good. Yeah. And I think that's true of a lot of pithy quote advice. Mm-hmm. It's like, this sounds good when you don't, Think about, think about it skeptically, <laughs> yeah, when you don't critically assess it. What this would necessitate in a skillless 21-year-old college graduate with $120,000 worth of student loans to pay off. Yeah. Like, you could say if you get to pick between multiple jobs, go for the one where yeah, you want to yeah, be yeah. like the person that you work for. Mm-hmm. Um, one similar to that, which I do think is, again, none of these are totalizing, but is um, if you wouldn't work with someone for... A long time, don't work with them for a short time. I think is a generally good one. That's an Evolve Ravicom one that I think is just meaning like if you don't trust this person over the long frame, uh, don't. Or maybe I'm maybe I'm mixing two. Perhaps this is a different one that we've talked about, which is like if you know someone to be dishonest, don't work with them and then try to cap your downside by like writing a contract that protects you. Yeah, yeah. Well, um, that's different. Yeah, I think then that's, that's, that's the original. But that I correct. I agree with fully, which yeah. is you can't. You, if you know someone is a scorpion in the parable of the scorpion and the frog, don't, you cannot try to protect yourself with a contract mm-hmm. because all the ways that someone might try to, if someone will hurt you to benefit themselves, you can't write 
all of the ways that they're going to think of it and protect yourself in a contract. They will just find other ways that you haven't protected against to try to hurt you to help themselves if that is their nature. Cool. Anything else? Uh, no, nothing crazy. Very good. What do we got? Oh, we got a question. A question? Yes. One single surprise. We have a question at the end. Um, so how to deal with severe loneliness? I never really had a close connection with anyone. I don't have any friends, family, or any real connection in my life. Wow. I have a history of being constantly made fun of, rejected, and just being put down in my home and school life when I was a kid. It has made it hard to try and engage with people, and I still try and put myself out there, but by the end of the night, I still feel invisible, which just makes me feel worse. Online dating, I'll go on dates and they go well, but then a week later, they'll just fizzle out. Mm. I don't know what to do anymore. As I turn 40, I feel like I'm running out of time to make a meaningful connection, and the Charisma University is just not an option at this time. So I would probably try to focus on um, what like communities built around hobbies at this point. Uh, so a couple, I mean, we've talked about this. I don't know if it's so big, but you can go to meetup.com. They have, there's hiking groups. There's, I, I would try to, um, take any of the hobbies that you have. And if you don't hobbies that you'd like to have and participate in those communities. I know people that are a little bit older than me, like you, like who will go to salsa dancing or those kinds of things. And they'll take the salsa dancing lesson. They start hanging out with the salsa dance community. Then it's, they become a sauce, like then they're the salsa dancing thing. Um, but that would be my advice is not to go out into environments that are purely socializing, flirting, bar, networking event, but that instead have an activity that connects people. Interesting. Yeah, I think for resources, I'll defer to Charlie here for which is the best emotional mastery type book to purchase because it sounds like you there's probably a lot of self-love uh stuff going on here in terms of you you know you were bullied and lacked connection and I think probably are a mix of insecure and hard on yourself and scared of being hurt that is going to make it tough for you to connect with people but I don't know the best resource to help with that I understand you can't afford Chris University it, for better interacting with people, I would say, I think you can go to stuff like Salsa Night or Meetups or whatever it might be. But if you aren't good at getting people to like you, that won't necessarily go anywhere. So I would suggest checking out Dale Carnegie's book, How to Win Friends and Influence People. It's $10. It's not, it's a fraction of the CU cost. But I think you may find in reading it that you do things that make it hard to connect. Like maybe you're just argumentative and you think it's fun, but other people don't, or maybe you're, you don't know what questions to ask or how to talk about yourself. I think if you can go into that, put your ego aside and actually say, do I do this, the stuff that he says is bad? Do I do the stuff that he's good? Uh, that book could be very helpful for getting the basics down in terms of making a good impression, getting people to like you and want to see you again. Mm -hmm. And if you've not read it, I think Six Pillars of Self-Esteem is also a really good foundational one that span, yeah, it's about feeling good on the inside and, and the, ac the actions that are required to generate cool. that. So, yeah, so if you can't afford CU, I'd say Six Pillars of Self-Esteem, <clears throat> Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, and then go to things that you're going to have fun at. I mean, the good thing about going to meetups is that if you... If you're going to at least a, you took a hike. Yeah, exactly. If you're going to a surf meetup and you don't meet anyone you like, at least you surfed. If you went yeah. to a salsa thing and you didn't meet anyone you liked, at least you salsa danced. Mm -hmm. It can remove the pressure of this is only a good use of my time if I walk away with a lifelong connection. You go, no, like at least you got to play basketball, do improv, whatever it is. So uh, I think that's a nice way to meet people without making it all or nothing to put a lot. It, may, it puts less social pressure on yourself. Cool. Nice. Let's All move right. on to Patreon. What are we talking about today, Justin? Uh, we're going to talk about improving your dating life without letting it overshadow your other priorities. Um, we're going to talk about the biggest challenge Charlie and Ben's friendship has faced. And then we're going to answer a series of questions that I'm going to start deferring to when people, um, when people ask about cold approaching. So like a cold approach 101. All right, let's hop in. <laughs> 